Welcome to Bahati Life YouTube channel featuring Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. This is the space to ground, grow, and connect with magic and intention. May this video inspire you to come home to yourself and remind you of your own magic within. I hope this message reaches you with perfect divine timing. Now grab your favorite tea and let's go ahead and dive right in. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. We're in my office, but you can't tell because I don't think I've ever given you guys this angle before. This is um, my what you normally see. You normally see my backdrop on this side with the beautiful painting and the lights and everything. Right now we're facing the window. It is a vibe. There's been some changes going on here. All good changes, but changes nonetheless. And anytime there's a change, we have to kind of like pivot and flow with it, which has been my vibe lately. Having said that, how are you guys feeling? This morning was a little weird for me personally. The energy was off. When I stepped outside of my door, I was good. When I went out into the world, I was like, I don't even know what this is. I almost immediately came back home and sage myself, did a whole energy cleanse. I did Bahati Love Notes. I was talking to you guys. For those of you guys that are subscribed to Bahati Love Notes, during that reading time, we were kind of chit-chatting about the energies and all that that's been kind of brewing in the collective energy. I was just like, nah, this is not it. So I wanted to pretty much do like a reset. I feel like it's because of the Sagittarius full moon. With that full moon, of course it's positive, but full moons in general can be very confronting. They can bring up so much in our face that you have to see, that you have to experience, that you have to address, that you have to deal with. That's the energy of a full moon. And even though Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, Jupiter is known as the great benefactor. He is so generous in what it is that he wishes to give to us in abundance and prosperity and wisdom and all of the above. But at the same time, a lot is a lot, period. And it's a full moon, and full moons, again, bring all of our emotions up to the surface. So it brings me back to my original question. How are you feeling? How has this full moon been for you? I'm reading in my comments and in my messages and DMs from you guys that the full moon has been a bit of a doozy. It's kind of thrown you, thrown you for in like into this whirlwind, probably, from an astrological standpoint, this is because also Pluto is retrograde right now, bringing up dense in energy, shadow beliefs, obsessions, material um, addictions, like our addictions to things that we can touch, things that we feel like substances that is that we need. Of course, when we say substances, I think for most of us, the first thing that you think of could be like drugs and alcohol or food but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It's tangible things, things that we can put our hands on that we're just like, I, I'm i going to this in order to help me to cope with what is happening in my day to day. And wh while Pluto is now retrograde, kind of retracing his steps back, out of Aquarius and back into the sign of Capricorn, we have to revisit this long standing energy that we feel, most of us feel like we should just have already graduated away from. There's a lot going on again. So number one, how are you guys feeling with this full moon that just happened? It was June 3rd. For some of you guys, June 4th. Let me know down in the comments. And uh, in the meantime, guys, let's go ahead and dive into the week ahead because there is so much to discuss. So like I said, the full moon happened June 3rd, but when something like that happens or when there's a transit or any type of astrological event, I don't just look at that one day, we have to look at the days around it because it's it, it encompass, encompasses, is that the right word? It hugs all of those days. It brings all of its energy into those days. So we are still, even though it's Monday, the day that as I'm filming and sharing this message and chatting with you guys now, even though the full moon has already occurred, we're still moving out of that energy or and still dealing with what the full moon brought up for us. Full moons have a tendency to close out significant chapters in our life, number one. And number two, they bring so much information, feelings up to the surface. 
like I said in the very beginning of this video, Pluto is interwoven in this full moon because Pluto's energy is dabbling again in our shadow. It's dab dabbling in our secrets and bringing back elements of the past. So let's say you have been dealing with health related issues. The full moon can bring a blessing in your life, but it can also um, uh, carry up from the from the bottom this underlying issue that you thought that you had already addressed. Let's say there's um, any type of shadow beliefs or feelings that have been lying dormant within you, things that you haven't completely closed out or you've closed them out but you remember that healing isn't linear, you almost have to kind of like retrace your steps back through that territory again no matter how painful it is, no matter how like you're just like, oh my God, I can't, I can't. And that's been the overarching theme that I feel like I'm seeing in my comments is just, I'm tired, I'm tired. How long can it go? And I just wanna reassure you and confirm to you that you're not crazy. This isn't abnormal. This transit is very, very slow moving and we're towards the end of it. So it's not like you've got, you've been given a break. You know, you've been in it for, for years. So it's it's really interesting the healing that's happening here, but even as you're healing, there can be a lot of exhaustion that's coming through with that. One of the things that I've been telling you guys in the last few weeks, every time I come on and, and have this sit down conversation with you is keep your eyes on Mars's transit through the sign of Leo. So Mars rules our drive, our ambition, how we want to pursue and chase certain things. It's that warrior-like energy that says, that's mine, I'm going for it, I can do this, I'm capable. As it's transiting through the sign of Leo, it, it actually helps us kind of soften the blow of the rest of these transits because it's the invitation. Invitation, I don't know why I have the hardest time saying inv invitation. I always say invitation. But it's the invitation for play, for joy, for pleasure. But also the need, the desire, the purpose that is being brought up within you to begin to pursue the pursuit of pleasure and your understanding that what you create is worth it and significant, but also that you are more than just the heavier aspects of life and you're more than the monotonous day-to-day -day bits and pieces of life. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. I do my best to try to break the astrology chart down. And as you guys know, I don't look at just one transit. I look at, at the chart as a whole. But basically what I'm trying to say is that with this day-to-day -day routine and or this pursuit for purpose or um, certain things that, is, that you're manifesting or practices that you do every day, those things are very important. But if that is our own main focus, sometimes we can lose sight of the beauty and the blessing of why the divine has us here which extends beyond our this greater sense of purpose we are also meant to be curious to play to have fun to let our hair down to relax that is a, a, a sense of abundance that spirit the divine the cosmos the universe wants to provide for you as well and as mars is transiting through the sign of leo it's easier said than done but do your best to incorporate this play type of spirit, this childlike type of spirit, this innocence that is amongst every single one of us right now. Are you feeling it? Are you allowing yourself to feel it? Or are you so caught up in self-protection, self-preservation, all these major things that is that you have to do that are on your to-do list, obligations, responsibilities, etc., etc., that you have disconnected from that childlike nature, that ability to let your hair down to do something fun and to do something because it feels good, not because you're gonna get anything out of it. For example, money, or it's it makes sense to help other people in this way. This is about doing it because it, it literally brings you joy. This is gonna be a huge saving grace for so many of us, for so many of us. One thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about in this week is the fact that the part of fortune is all still transiting through the sign of Aries and Aries is the sign that rules I am it's a reminder that our greatest fortune and our greatest blessings at this moment in time is going to come from us selfishly prioritizing our own needs so to speak 
or following that major hunch to launch something brand new. So I, having said that, there is a huge, huge overarching theme lately of closing out a major chapter within your life. This can show up in a, a multitude of different ways. Every single one of us is different. We all have different astrological charts um, set up in different ways. But either way, however the, the chips fall for you, there is this overarching energy about closing something significant within your life. It might be, for some of you guys, it's the hope that something can grow in this one area or in this relationship or in this situation. It's, it's you realizing that you staying in that space doesn't serve you anymore. You had hope for the situation. You had faith that this would change, that this would pivot. But you're understanding right now that it's in your best interest to tap into, again, that full moon and Sagittarius energy and begin to expand and see beyond the current limitations of your expectations that this situation this circumstance is all that it can be or that you have to stay here and wait for this to change when you yourself are need to be the one to initiate the change in order to begin to start a fresh start for for yourself and it confronts the idea of selfish selfishness am i being selfish by saying no to this person am i being selfish by canceling this energy out of my life because it's it, it it's extracting so much from me i, I want to be a good person if, if am i still a good person am i still a valuable person if i disconnect myself from this energy is it am i still safe if i venture outside of this or in my desire for something more have i made myself more vulnerable do i have the energy the space to protect myself as i enter into this next season within my life there's this huge these huge questions guys those are the questions i can think of off the top of my head but there's these huge questions that keep bubbling up to the surface and they are so significant they're so worth exploring and they the question well the answer to the question is to bring the energy into yourself and say who am I? Who am I really? Why am I doing this? Why do I show up? What is my purpose here? Why, like, how? How and why and when? Like, all of these questions, like, all of these major questions are coming through. And my advice to you is to do what I do, which is to bring all of those questions to, to the divine and give a lot of space and patience to waiting the answer. And in the meantime, while you wait, wait the answer, Listen to how your energy, how your spirit, how your body responds to the answers that are, I believe are going to come through as questions. I really feel like this is a very specific message for someone to receive right now that if you are waiting from, for an answer from the divine, for an answer, answer from your guides, from your angels, don't be surprised if the answer comes to you in a question. And the way that you answer that question will share a lot about your present circumstances, about your present beliefs, what you think you're capable of, what you think can happen, and what needs to happen next. Take your time with the answering of that question. It's going. It's a loaded question, but it's gonna give you so much. That's gonna be the overarching theme that we're gonna experience this week. I can really truly feel that. Next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the fact that Pluto will be entering again back to the sign of Capricorn. We're gonna be feeling the breakdown of, no, I'm gonna say this. We're gonna feel the continue, continued breakdown of st structure, of rules, of regulations, of contractual things, of obligations that we as a society, but also we individually have co-signed whether we realize we co-signed along with it or not that means that we energetically are saying yes to it again the sagittarius full moon sagittarius rules our ability to see and extend beyond current limitations so i want to encourage you that as pluto is entering back into the sign of capricorn because it's retracing its steps it's retrograde it's going to be happening june 11th and the same day, Mercury, the planet that rules our minds, rules our ability to process information, how we connect with others, what we're thinking, how we're thinking, how the wheels are turning within us is going to be entering the sign of Gemini. Gemini is huge on asking questions, huge on being curious, huge on exploration. With all of these energies here, 
it's so amazing this week to push your desk or push your chair away from your desk or get up from where it is that you're sitting and go for a walk or sign up for a class and listen to other perspectives in order to do what you haven't done yet ever. This energy feels like a breakthrough. It feels infinitely blessed. It, 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 it feels so generously providing of wisdom of, I don't know why I just heard second chances. Um, and when I hear second chances, the, the immediate thing that spirit is leading me into is like a second lease at life, like a second attempt to, to live your life in a huge way. It's like a phoenix being reborn from the ashes. This is not only in our intimate lives, but I also think we're going to see this in the world. Not I think, I know that we're going to see this in the world. It's our politics, our, our business, it's spending, it's debt. All of those things are being assessed right now and will be aggressively assessed as Pluto is retracing his steps back to the sign of Capricorn because he says, listen, this needs to be dealt with. You don't just get to sweep this under the rug and move forward as if it didn't happen. We have to handle it. We have to address it. And we need a leader or leaders who have the right priorities in mind because there has been an abuse of power. That's not my political beliefs. Guys, don't come for me. I, you guys know I don't even talk about my personal beliefs on my channel ever. <laughs> unless I explicitly state that, it's what I'm seeing within the chart. There has been some form of abuse in government, politics, and business. It is what it is, it's, it's, in, it's in the chart. Um, don't fight with me about it, fight with the divine. <laughs> so the next transit I wanna to talk to you guys about is the fact that Venus is gonna be squaring off with Jupiter also June 11th. June 11th is gonna be a huge day for major significant changes and it's literally is showcasing the entire energy that we're going to be feeling june 11th as venus is squaring off with jupiter it's going to have us questioning so much of our values what is important to us now why we're doing what we're doing and this will break down into relationships it'll also break it down into spending it'll break down into spending because it money is energy Money is something that we quote unquote earn and what do we do with the resources that we have earned? Like what, what are we, where is that energy going? That is highlighting not only your needs but also your insecurities, believe it or not, sit with that. Um, but it, it highlights your actual priorities and don't look at it from a superficial, superficial level. Go deep with this. You have no choice but to go deep. For example, if you're buying um, designer things and you have a history of buying designer things, there's nothing wrong with that, but what does the designer branding represent? Sometimes we can be really quick to say, oh, I prefer quality. Sure, you know, most, well, some designer things do bring a high level of quality. However, what does the branding, why, what is it about the branding that stands out to you? Is there a statement that is that you're making? Is there something that you need to prove? or a, something that needs to be stated as soon as someone looks at you. These are not judgmental assessments. I'm not judging the situation, of course not. I have designer stuff myself. It's the ability to ask certain questions. Why, what value does this hold within my life? Does this actually set me up for f success or is it setting me up for failure? Because I need to know, I need to understand why I'm doing this. This relationship, this person, this friendship that I'm pursuing, what does it mean for me? What value does it hold? Not to say that that person doesn't have value, not to say that friendships don't have value, but this friendship with this person, specifically, what value does it hold? And go deep with it, don't say superficial, okay? All of these things are getting called to the forefront and Venus squaring off with Jupiter has a wonderful way, especially now that she's um, transiting out of Cancer and into the sign of Leo, it has a wonderful way of calling to the forefront, again, our values, what we're drawn to, what we're attracted to, and what that says about us, what that reveals to us about the current status quo and where we're at in our lives right now. So my goodness, guys, there's a lot going on in these astrological transits. I know that sometimes it can be really tough to digest, but I'm here for you. So feel free to leave uh, comments down below. 
this video, not even for the YouTube algorithm. I know that a lot of YouTube channels say that. Let me know down in the comments, but on some real shit, like, yes, of course, it helps the YouTube channel grow. My YouTube channel, you know, that it's, it's more of a community sense and that's genuine for me. I do want to hear your experiences because selfishly, it helps me within my own study of astrology. I've been studying this for my entire life, almost my entire life. And you guys sharing your experiences, especially if you incorporate your rising sign into that and your sun sign second, um, it does it does help a lot. It does help a lot. But also, it, I love this sense of community that is that we have here. And I've started realizing only just recently that I was watching you guys connect with each other and I thought how special that was. But lately I've realized that there are so many good of you guys out there, if that makes any sense, if that's even English. Is that English? I don't know if I just spoke English just now, but there's so many good energies in the group, you know? And the more that I've allowed myself to be open to closeness with you guys, the more that I'm like, super, it's it's crazy that it's taken me this long, but I'm just being transparent. It's the more that I'm realizing like, wow, like we do have something special here. Like we really do. And I know that you guys tell me that all the time, but it's another thing to see it, hear it and to versus to sit with it and receive it. And I am receiving truly the blessing and the awareness of what the YouTube channel has brought in this space. Like it, it really truly is like interesting friendships and stuff. So, um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, just a few announcements before I go, guys. I'm working through orders. I'm also working through the Jupiter transit readings. Um, I, I do get questions. It's not crazy questions because I, most of you guys know my process. But just to clarify, I, I work through readings, astrological readings and intuitive readings in the order that is I receive them. I'm never one to rush. It's not just readings that is that I do. I also create custom oils. Here's one right now. I'm wrapping and packing them. Did you guys notice Nova is in the back? Okay, um, yeah, so that's just my process, and I'm a Virgo. I do everything with ritual and intention. I take my time. I never rush. I don't like to rush. It's just not good for the process. It's not good for you, and you guys you guys know it, too. I even make, like, handwritten notes to my clients, so everything is done with intention. Everything. Everything. So I appreciate um, you being here with me for so long. Unbelievable. Okay, I'm going to get this video up for you guys. And, um, yeah, let me know again, like pin this video and let me know how this week unfolds. Again, I'm putting myself out there this morning started off weird. The energy was weird. I'm not going to lie. I never lie. I talked about it immediately on Bahati love notes or with the Bahati love notes group. I uh, sage the energy, cleanse the energy, had a fresh start. And now I feel like it's pivoted in, a, in, a, in an interesting way, in a better way. I'm going to call it better. But I'm saying that to say that from my experience this week, I had to be intentional with how I was showing up for this week because it was, I believe, as a result of this full moon bringing a whole lot. It wasn't my energy. It was like what I was seeing in the world. And Bahati Love Notes knows exactly what it is I'm talking about because I shared the story this morning. It was the energy that is I walked into. So if that's what I'm experiencing, I can only imagine what you guys have gone through already or what you're seeing. Whew, so let me know. But we can change this and we have changed this. Just the fact that we're here right now is definitely for the better. So having said that, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you so much. Don't forget to check out Bahati, Love, Bahati Life Podcast because that's too, coming up too. And um, I will definitely see you guys in my next video. For those of you guys that are passing through and you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, thank you so much for hanging out. No pressure, but feel free to subscribe. Share this video with your friends and your family or people that you think are like-minded. I started realizing that a lot of people are sharing it with their coworkers, which is so cool. So shout out to those who are hanging out with your coworkers right now, are bonding with your coworkers. That's so cool. I remember those days. That was awesome. But until then, you guys, seriously, thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.